Hey folks, Krusty Old Marine here. I'm uh, doing some velocity testing today on my 6.5 and uh, you'll notice I've got two chronographs set up. I've got my lab radar and I've got my older Caldwell. Uh, reason I have two today, I just wanted to compare the Caldwell to the lab radar. Uh, just, you know, just for fun, see how they measure out against each other. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain with the lab radar, I've been real happy with it. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how the Caldwell performs against it. And uh, shooting today at uh, 100 yards, I got a bunch of testing. I got a testing board set up, and uh, we're going to see how all these uh, different powder charges on the 6.5 works out. Looking for that uh, elusive velocity. Now. Okay, so these first few shots are just going to be uh, Fowlers and Siders and double checking the zero. Uh, I got a little bit of new equipment here. I've got a new bag, uh, rear bag rider, and uh, just kind of get everything set up and warmed up before we uh, start on the actual velocity nodes. Okay, that was 2671 on the lab radar, 2648 on the Caldwell, and that round hit about uh, about an inch low okay we've got about a variable three mile an hour wind today uh the temperature is currently 79 it's 2993 on the uh, barometric pressure 84 percent humidity uh pressure altitude's 1063 so a little bit lower than our 1083 above sea level but density altitude's 2638 let's go for shot number two here Twenty-six seventy-one on the uh, Caldwell. I think my lab radar just turned off. <sighs> yep. Okay, shot number three. Twenty-six ninety-five on the lab radar. Twenty-six sixty-eight on the Caldwell. That's the third shot. It was uh, perfect elevation. About three quarters of an inch left. Apparently got about a, call it about a three quarter inch group. Take a fourth shot here, then we'll start some real testing. That one keyholed with the first. It was 2685 on the lab radar, 2660 on the Caldwell. Now I'm going to start round robin on the uh, actual stuff we're testing today. The uh, new Nostler Brass and Nostler 140 RDFs. Okay, this is the uh, 42.5 grain. That was 26.45 and 25.67 on the Caldwell's. Quite a bit different. That shot was perfect left and right and about uh, seven eighths of an inch low. Now we're shooting these round robins, so the next one's going to be 42 8. Six forty three and twenty six oh six. The next one's going to be forty three one. That's 2656, 2632. We have to bring in the outhouses. Yeah. Get an aerial photo. All this stuff set up there and all these damn blue shit houses. <laughs> but anyway, everything worked out. They had to, had to, they're going to have a triage and go through and talk about it. They had a, a woman 
bird colonel come in and inspect it. Yeah. She got out there and after the media is over with, they was talking about how, you know, what they've done. She said, you know, these civilians think of everything. So those outhouses out there, so as you go in there, so they got a place to set your helmet. <laughs> yeah. There's a bird colonel. Okay, now I got the everything reset. Everybody's gone. And I'm shooting the hottest load of 44.3. It's three tenths of a grain over what's called for in max. 27.85 on the lab radar and 2752 on the Caldwell. So which one's right? I don't know. So the lab radar is reading on average anywhere from 23 to 38 feet per second faster than the Caldwell. Which one's correct? I have no idea. Uh, do we go with what the lab radar is because it's, you know, it's the technology um, or do we go with Caldwell? You know, it's been around for decades, that kind of technology. So I don't know which one's correct. Uh, do we add them together and do the average? You know, we put it in the ballistics calculator. Who knows? But I'm going to continue with this test. Uh, actually, before we continue with it, let's look at this round. That's the one I just fired. And I can't see in the camera if there's any pressure signs. I'm going to take a look at it here. Uh, nope, looks good. And uh, we'll do a new um, density altitude check and temperature check here and uh, record that for the second round. Here we go. All right, that was the first shot of round two on the uh, 425. We got a 2655 and let's zoom into here. You can see we got uh, error three. That's one of the things that I like a whole lot better about the lab radar is I get a lot less errors with it. Like I said, I don't know which one's the more accurate or do we need to average between the two, but let's continue on. Second shot, 42. Twenty-six thirty-six. That's a little lower. And twenty-five sixty-four. And that shot just a little right, a little lower than shot number one. Which makes sense. It's a little slower in velocity. All right, moving on to forty-three-one. All right, that forty-three-one was twenty-six sixty-two. Looks like it's the same hole. And twenty-six thirty-six. Alright, 43, 4. 27, 23. And 27, 10. Alright, moving on to 43, 7. 27, 46 and 26, 94. Moving on to 44. 27, Real close to the last hole. 2772, 2743. Out of the hot load, 44.3. 2810, 2791. Pretty hot. Right beside the last one. These are the two rounds at 44.3. And after inspecting them a little bit closer, I think there probably is a little bit of pressure sign right there. Looks like there's just a little bit of cratering around the uh, firing pin strike. So, uh, but we knew that was over max. And uh, I'll run that through the software when I get home, see what kind of pressures it's showing at. Uh, this temperature and everything but it gets much hotter that's going to be worse and typically you don't want to be right at the upper end anyway so anyway so after all this testing how do i feel like the caldwell and the lab radar stack up against each other you can see that the caldwell misses shots something i don't like about it why does it do it i have no idea other than there's a bad sun angle or the electronic eyes aren't picking up the bullet the lab radar it has never missed a shot unless it's on me. You know, if I'm sitting there running my mouth too much and I let it time out, then yeah, it'll miss a shot. But you just gotta check it before you shoot and you're good to go. 
Also, I use a trigger for the lab radar. That helps immensely with not recording, you know, somebody else's shot. There's other people shooting here. Uh, using a trigger, it never records that. But there is a little problem with it. Uh, when I'm running the gas gun, AR-10, AR-15, sometimes it'll try to record a shot on the bolt closure. You won't get any velocity, but you have to go up there and delete it, and then you're good to go. It's not always, but uh, I prefer using the trigger. It just makes it record a whole lot better. As far as accuracy on the Caldwell, well, it was positioned nine feet in front of the muzzle, and the shots it re was recording were way more off than what uh, velocity drop should be for nine feet. So for that reason, I don't think the Caldwell is super accurate. What's my opinion on the accuracy of the lab radar? I think it's great. Um, you know, it all comes down to when you plug the numbers into your ballistics calculator, does it match out there at a thousand yards? Because the ballistic calculator is using math and it's not gonna lie to you. So if your muzzle velocity is off a little bit, then yeah, you may have a little bit of difference on your uh, ballistics calculator. But for mine, I've never seen a difference of more than eighth of an MOA at a thousand yards. So that's pretty tight. One, and really the main reason that I switched from the Caldwell to the Lab Radar is when I switched phones back in uh, December, <coughs> Caldwell uses the uh, audio cable from the audio jack on the phone back to the unit, and it'll set up all the SDs and ESs. Uh, I was getting some errors with that, but when I switched the phone, the new phone didn't have an audio jack, uh, so I bought a uh, Samsung USB-C to audio jack, which, you know, same brand, it should work great. No, still didn't work. So, lab radar, I got no issues with it. So, I hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video. Uh, you know, your support means a lot to me. Helps me keep the channel going. And uh, don't forget, kids, X's win matches. Y'all keep the greasy side down. Have a good one.